For the Open Muscle Project, we developed a low-cost sensor system for both the forearm muscles and for finger movements. We evaluated machine learning models to determine the efficacy of their predictions given our feature and label data set. Getting clean and relevant data was difficult and we had to adopt a more quantized or bite-sized approach. Full disclosure, mostly this is just a team of me, ChatGPT, and a couple of friends that I bounce ideas off of. But finding an inexpensive bracelet design that was relatively low cost was cumbersome and some open source projects were actually tried before the creation of the LASK system and the open muscle band. The whole project rested on the idea that machine learning or artificial neural networks would be the one to tease out the meaningful data from the sensors located radially around the forearm muscles in a band form. This was, from inception, the way that we were going to determine which finger the person was trying to move. The role of ChatGPT was paramount. It provided feedback for advanced machine learning questions. It provided sample code based off of my supplied parameters. It gave me advice for finding the right type of model to fit my already predefined data points. ChatGPT also helped with the outline for this video and to write articles based on my findings. The accuracy of the model was also found by asking ChatGPT what the output meant and how it could be improved. The greatest task that GPT-4 assisted me with was actually debugging the code because I used some of the sample code that it provided. Most of it was written entirely by me and I just simply copy and pasted the error output and it was quick to identify the cause and a potential solution. The data collection and model training process were relatively straightforward. I had already constructed the basic operating system for the open muscle band and the LASK system to send all the data over UDP packets. All these UDP packets were sent and a receiving program that was a Python listening program converted those into JSON values that were saved in a text file. From that text file, they were converted to a CSV file, and they were matched in pairs, and some of the data was omitted. Overall, we received about 100 samples per second, half of which was thrown out. Once I had this data set in a program, GPT-4 suggested the three different training models for my data. At first, it only had me enter in one variable and one output, so one feature and one label. I specified I had 12 sensor datas, each with a timestamp, and four label datas with a timestamp as well. It provided generic code that I was able to modify and successfully train three different models. The first of which was a logistics regression. The second was a SGD classifier. I wanted to see the training progress. And lastly, the random forest regressor was ultimately the one I used to proceed for the rest of my project. The training dataset was small and only 10 megabytes in size and taken over the course of about 5 to 10 minutes. The data was not very large and it was just a preliminary test to see how the whole process worked. The noise from the open muscle band was significant so the error rate was not expected to be very good from the start. It was almost a worst case scenario going in. Model performance in real world applications. The mean average error after I did the initial training was roughly 25, which equates to a 12% error rate given that the output for the label system was in between 5200 and 5500. This was done on an 80% 20% split like normal, where we trained it for 80% of the data and 20% was used to test it. After the model was trained, it was saved using the Pickle Python library. The model was then able to be used for live predictions. ChatGPT did give a decent outline of this process, but most of the code was done by me, and ChatGPT4 mostly helped with troubleshooting, and it did so quite effectively. I started this project knowing just that other machine learning systems, given their input and their output, could easily be applied to the biometrics or the prosthetics industry. The impact of this system, having to be able to detect finger movements on a noisy sensor with minimal training data, shows a giant potential. Low-cost sensors for prosthetic devices and a system that helps anonymize the data and host featured and labeled data for everyone could be used to provide an impact to help many people and the industry as a whole. I want you to tell me what you think. Future improvements. The next step for open muscle band is to have 24-bit ADCs instead of 13-bit. Improve the wire shielding and management. Create a Python library for training and predicting sensor data. 
improve the LASK system to improve the thumb, and other sensor types for the label data. Shrink the model to be used on mobile devices. We need engineers, students, and enthusiasts to help. To spread the word, submit your own data, to help code and engineer, and adopt the system as a whole. Please like or subscribe my content, or follow Open Muscle or me on all social media. The role of AI in ChatGPT is revolutionizing the prosthetic technologies industry. AI has advanced to help reduce the sensor cost for prosthetics, help me to find the right library and model to train my own neural network. It also enables individuals such as myself to take on a project that usually an entire team would have to devote their time to. I want to express my gratitude to my good friend Harry, who is my main go-to person for all of my tech questions. I want to also send a shout out to Ultimate Robotics and their team for their encouragement. I feel that they are kindred spirits in doing things in a similar vein to what I'm doing. I want to thank Hackaday for giving me the time of day and writing articles about the work I am so passionate about. But mostly, I want to thank you for watching. Let's see if we can make a positive dent in this world.